everyone and welcome to this Knowledge Well session on protecting your pregnancy. I'm Nicole, I'm an accredited practicing dietitian and accredited nutritionist here in Sydney, Australia. I'm also one of Full Well's team members, so I'm the nutrition communications coordinator. So if you've reached out via Instagram, Facebook or sent an email, you've potentially spoken with me already. So hello and welcome and let's get into the presentation. So as I mentioned, I'm located here in Sydney, so I went to the University of Sydney and have 10 years experience across a variety of different areas in dietetics, from hospitals, rehabilitation and aged care centres, right through to private practices. And I decided to specialise in women's health dietetics with a focus on fertility and pregnancy because I found it was such a fascinating area with lots of new emerging research. Protecting your pregnancy is obviously something I'm really passionate about, but I do appreciate that it can be really overwhelming in terms of knowing where to start when you want to make changes to what you're eating and your lifestyle. So hopefully you'll take away a few things from today's presentation that are helpful. So today we'll be covering four different areas, the first of which is how our environment affects fertility, our pregnancy and the health of baby what we call the four P's, some simple and affordable strategies to help you create a healthier environment, and an additional three tips that you can use to protect your pregnancy. So we'll start off by talking about how the environment affects our fertility. So the Toxicant and Disease Database links chemical contaminants to around 180 different human diseases and conditions, including most cancers, birth defects, asthma, organ failure, infertility, miscarriage, autoimmune conditions, Parkinson's and autism. And in men, we've seen a substantial decline in sperm concentrations and sperm quality among men living in industrialized countries. In women, we've seen that exposure to volatile organic chemicals, chemical dust and pesticides is associated with an increased risk of infertility. And in both men and women, we've seen an association between cigarette smoking, secondhand smoking and other air pollutants and decreased fertility. Unfortunately, the problem is widespread and around 80,000 different chemicals are used and released into the US environment alone. So you may have heard of the term forever chemicals. So PFAS are a group of thousands of man-made substances nicknamed forever chemicals because they build up in our bodies and never break down in the environment. So traditionally they've been used because of their non-stick and stain repellent qualities and they can be found across a variety of different areas in our environment. So everything from personal care products, food packaging and cookware, just to name a few. These forever chemicals have also been found in cord blood. So the environmental working group scientists have identified dozens of studies that report the presence of PFAS in cord blood. So the presence of these chemicals is also a threat to pregnant people, serving as first contacts with PFAS before they can pass from the uterus to the developing fetus by way of the umbilical cord. So obviously we want to try and figure out how do we limit our exposure to these toxins. And while we can't completely avoid exposure, we can minimize our exposure to them. The biggest offenders are plastics, pesticides, pollution and personal care products. And not only can these four Ps negatively impact our hormones, but they can also impact our body's natural detoxification system, our ability to metabolize nutrients, our gut health, our mental clarity and cognition, and can also affect the development of a variety of different diseases. So once we define what they are, we will touch individually on each of the four P's or these main products and places where we encounter these endocrine disruptors. And then we'll cover what to do when you cross paths with these chemicals so you can implement our strategies and hopefully steer clear. 
So what are endocrine disrupting chemicals? So endocrine disrupting chemicals or EDCs are chemicals that act like block or disrupt our hormones. So they can disrupt our sex hormones by messing with metabolism, obstructing the dialogue between the genetic and non-genetic pathways, interfere with hormonal feedback regulation and neuroendocrine cells, and change DNA methylation. So the EWC actually has a really great PDF guide that outlines eight hormone altering chemicals and how you can avoid them. And the guide covers pesticides, phthalates, parabens, perchlorate, heavy metals, PFAS, BPA, and oxybenzone. And the impact of endocrine disruptors can be multi-generational, so they do advise minimizing exposure where possible. So I've popped the link there just in case you want to look at that um, and learn a little bit more. So as I briefly touched on, the four P's are plastics, pesticides, pollution, and personal care products. And we'll dive into each of these um, individually just to give you some more detail. So environmental toxins, as we mentioned, can be damaging. And these four P's are typically the big offenders. So these are the ones, as we said, that can cause endocrine disruption and hormone imbalance. So taking a look into your environment can be really beneficial when you're planning for pregnancy and once you're pregnant. So first we'll dive into plastics. So you've probably heard of this one. So one of the most well-known chemicals found in plastic is BPA. BPA is an industrial chemical that's been used to make plastics and resins since the 60s. It's problematic because it mimics estrogen in our body and it can cause damage by disrupting hormones, harming your reproductive system and negatively impacting brain development and metabolic function. And it's also been linked to some cancers. And while BPA is dangerous for everyone, the developing fetus and babies are the most vulnerable age groups when it comes to BPA's toxic effects. And BPA unfortunately is hiding everywhere and the EWG thankfully provides steps to reduce exposure to BPA. The first of which is replacing canned foods with fresh, frozen or dried foods and limiting the number of packaged foods that you eat and really focusing on whole food options wherever you can. Never heating food in plastic. So this includes containers that you might get when you go out to get takeout. So always transferring it to a stainless steel pot, pan or glass container. Another way to avoid BPA is avoiding canned beverages like seltzer. So the lining of these cans typically contains BPA and the carbonation combined with the acidity of some of the added flavoring can cause the BPA to actually leach into the liquid. So a good option is to try sparkling waters in glass containers or even consider something like the soda stream, which actually now has a glass model available. Receipts is another way that we can be exposed to BPA and one that people often find surprising. So it can actually transfer to your hands and be absorbed through the skin. So if you do need to take a receipt, just make sure that you wash your hands really thoroughly after, particularly before eating. Athletic wear is another one that often surprises people. So on the 12th of October, 2022, the Center for Environmental Health sent legal notices to eight brands of sports bras and six brands of athletic shirts after testing showed that the clothing could expose people to up to 22 times the safe limit of BPA according to California law. So Reprise uses Tencel, which is actually a eucalyptus-based fabric, and GOTS organic cotton. So that's a good option if you're looking for a BPA-free alternative, as well as Ripple Yoga Wear, which also uses GOTS organic certified cotton and bio-based fabrics made from the bark of the beech tree. So unfortunately, as concern around BPA has grown among consumers, the industry has adapted by creating new and unfortunately probably equally dangerous chemicals to replace it that haven't been studied yet. 
So the advice here is just to stick with the tips that we've discussed to limit BPA exposure and any of its potential replacements. So minimizing plastic exposure can be done by avoiding microwavable food in plastic containers. So instead you can use a variety of different options, including glass, stainless steel, ceramic or wood containers to store your food. And when you do buy prepared foods, try to buy them in glass over plastic where possible, especially for things like acidic foods like tomatoes. You can also look at avoiding plastics that are marked with three, six or seven, and choose safer plastics that are marked with one, two, four and five, and you'll typically find those on the base of the containers. When on the go, try not to use disposable plastic water bottles, straws and coffee cups with plastic lids. Instead, drink from glass or stainless steel containers. Um, and avoid non-stick and Teflon cookware. Instead, opt for cast iron, stainless steel and ceramic. So I've actually popped a little kit in my card with stainless steel straws, glass, reusable cups and containers, just so that when I'm out and potentially getting takeaway, I've always got a safer option on hand because if it was up to my memory alone, honestly, I would not remember. So I find having this little kit in the back of my car ready to go, just always really helpful. So the next of the four P's is pesticides. And most people don't realize that pesticide residues hide in so many places. So they're obviously commonly found on conventionally grown produce. And this is true even after it's been washed or peeled. So there's much research to support the fact that pesticides can negatively impact both fertility and pregnancy outcomes. And minimizing pesticide exposure alone can really go a long way in terms of protecting and promoting your fertility. So some ways to minimize your pesticide exposure are getting in a variety of different produce, drinking clean water, trying to eat local and organic food, this will really help reduce your exposure to pesticides, but if organic is too pricey, try and buy the fruits and veggies with the lowest pesticide levels. So there's a list that you may have seen called the Clean 15, which are great ones to choose, and try to avoid the most contaminated ones, which are called the Dirty Dozen. Washing your fruits and vegetables before consuming them is also a great way to reduce your pesticide exposure. And you can find some great safe to use produce washing solutions at your supermarket or local health food store. But again, just make sure you check the ingredients so that they're safe on these as well. So another great way to minimize pesticide exposure is to use toxin free methods to control insects. So if you choose a chemical based commercial insecticide or pest control treatment, you might actually be introducing chemicals into your home that are more dangerous than the insects or pests that you're trying to get rid of. Um, the EWG actually points to a few good resources for toxin free pest control on their website if that's something that you're interested in exploring as well. And you can also look to do um, and make really cost effective options at home. So if you're looking, for example, for a cleaner um, and healthier cleaning product, you can mix a solution of one cup of vinegar to four cups of water inside a spray bottle and just add a tablespoon of lemon juice. And you've got a really good option that's not only going to clean your home, but be a lot safer for you and your family to be around. So as I touched on before, um, every year, the EWG compiles a list of the 12 most pesticide infested and the 15 least pesticide infested fruit and veggies. So this can be a really great way to stick to your budget if you want to use these lists to avoid the main offenders. So again, you don't necessarily have to be spending a ton of money on organic fruits and veggies if that's not something that you're in the position to afford at the moment. And these lists can be a really great place to start. And they do update them every year as well, which is great. So in 2022, the Dirty Dozen was strawberries, spinach, kale, collard and mustard greens, nectarines, apples, grapes, bell and hot peppers, 
cherries, peaches, pears, celery, and tomatoes. So they are the main ones that you would want to try and avoid. And the clean 15 or your safe options are avocados, sweet corn, pineapple, onions, papaya, sweet peas that are frozen, asparagus, honeydew melon, kiwi fruit, cabbage, mushrooms, cantaloupe, mangoes, watermelon, and sweet potatoes. So still plenty of great options that you can get in that are going to be pesticide reduced. So drinking clean water is another great way to avoid exposure to toxins. So there's generally two different types of filters that you can look at getting. So a carbon filter is generally the more affordable option, but still reduces many common water contaminants like lead and byproducts of disinfectants that are used to treat tap water. You can also look at investing in a reverse osmosis filter. So if your budget allows, you can install these to reduce contaminants that the carbon filters can't eliminate, like arsenic and perchlorate. So pollution is the next of our four Ps. So this is more than just outdoor smog that you think of when you hear the word pollution. So pollution is really anything that reduces the air quality in your environment. So this can include things like air fresheners, candles, plug-in and spray bottle room deodorizers, as well as perfumes. So removing air fresheners from your home is a really simple way to minimize your air pollution exposure. Another is avoiding secondhand smoke. So that's a big one. Ditching your air fresheners again, so things like sprays, plug-ins, candles, and perfumes is gonna really help. And instead using essential oil diffusers or boiling water with spices, organic beeswax and 100% soy wax coconut-based candles are also great options. Another thing which is personally one of my favorites, and you can see one of my plants, oops, just in the background here, you can get some plants. So my home is filled with a lot of the different types of plants um, that do help to reduce some of the exposure to toxins in your environment. I do live near quite a busy main road, so I've found this to be really helpful because plants actually have the ability to take in some of the particulates in the air and process them into oxygen via photosynthesis. Plus the microorganisms in the soil of the plants are responsible for a large amount of their cleaning effect. So some popular air cleaning plants are Dracania, spider plants, sword ferns, and peace lilies, which is one of my personal favorites. Spending time in nature is another great way to minimize your pollution exposure. And this is especially important if you live in a city with a high population density. So where you can make it a point to get outside and expose yourself to some fresh air. The Think Dirty app is also another great scanning app that includes a lot of household products. So it can give you a rating of how toxic the product is and also provide you with some less toxic alternatives. So according to the EWG, the average woman uses 12 personal care products per day with 168 different ingredients. So the hormone disruptors in these type of products are typically phthalates and parabens. And most of the ingredients in personal care products can be toxic for women and their reproductive health. And often the ingredients themselves can be unknown. So as I mentioned, the two most common toxins in these products are parabens and phthalates. And unfortunately, they're often hiding under the term fragrance when you look at what is in a product. Parabens are a group of endocrine disrupting chemicals that act as a preservative in these products, um, pharmaceuticals, as well as some food products. And phthalates are another endocrine disrupting group of chemicals that are used in plastic solvents and synthetic fragrances. And they're found across a variety of different personal care products. So everything from makeup and skincare through to body lotions, deodorants, hair care, fragrances or perfumes, as well as oral care. So a great way to try and minimize your exposure to toxins in the personal care product category is where you can to choose natural products. 
So read ingredients and stay on your toes is one of our tips. So the EWG thankfully again has an app called Healthy Living where you can search their database and it has thousands of products that you can scan even while you're out in the store and check their rating before you purchase. Um, so also consider switching to safer, high performing clean beauty products and there are a lot of options on the market now at a range of different price points which is great. And the EWG's Skin Deep Cosmetic Database is another great resource. Something that I've tried to do, because I know it can be overwhelming, um, I really love makeup and skincare products myself. So I've decided that when something runs out or finishes, I'll hop onto Skin Deep and find a cleaner option. And that's been a good way for me to try and transfer over a lot of my products that may not be the best option um, while still reducing my toxin exposure moving forward. So you can also help your body detoxify by eating plenty of organic and wild foods because the phytochemicals from a wide range of brightly coloured fruits, vegetables and herbs and spices will help your body to do this. So they're typically found in things like cruciferous veggies, pomegranate, berries, green tea, even the polyphenols in coffee turmeric, ginger, onions and garlic, as well as some herbs like cilantro, dill, parsley, rosemary, mint, the zest of citrus fruits, as well as beets. Um, other great options are making sure that you're including plenty of high quality protein in your diet. So things like wild meat and game, poultry, fish and free range, pasture raised eggs where possible, um, probiotic and prebiotic foods and including things like olive oil, fatty fish and nuts and seeds. So you may be thinking well that's all great but how do I get started? So my recommendations would be to start something like downloading the EWG's Healthy Living app that's going to help you select some healthier products visiting the Skin Deep website and even just getting curious about the products that you're currently using. So typing in some different brand names of products that you use every day and seeing where they rank. Um, even something like I said before, just choosing one thing from each category that you're going to tackle. So you might opt with personal care products to pick a different shampoo. You might choose to make your own household cleaner. So just picking one from each category as a starting point, that's not too overwhelming. And I think reminding ourselves that every little change makes a difference. So not getting caught up in having to be perfect, but just starting somewhere and taking steps towards reducing your overall toxin exposure. So I've also included a little bonus section with some extra tips that hopefully you'll find helpful. So in addition to avoiding all the toxins that we just spoke about, you can also protect your pregnancy by focusing on these three different things. So the first of which is prioritizing sleep, followed by incorporating movement and minimizing stress, which I know is easier said than done. So prioritizing sleep. Op Optimizing your sleep is really a crucial lifestyle factor that a lot of people don't realize can actually impact our fertility. So you may not know that our circadian rhythm is linked with our reproductive hormones, specifically our cortisol levels, as well as our melatonin production, which affects egg quality and is protective of eggs. So poor sleep affects progesterone levels. So if you find that you're often waking up between one and three o'clock in the morning, this can actually be linked to liver, detoxifica liver detoxification and frequently waking up throughout the night to go to the bathroom is also associated with increased cortisol or stress levels. So good quality sleep and making sure that you're getting enough of it is critical for hormone balance as well as your fertility. So trying to minimize your light exposure before bed, so staying off your phone, tablets or laptops, avoiding stimulants, so things like caffeine late in the evening, and avoiding all electronics near bedtime are all great ways to improve your sleep. 
Incorporating movement. So the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists states that exercising during pregnancy can potentially lower the incidence of some severe health issues. So for mum, it can help regulate appropriate weight gain. And while more research is needed, early studies do suggest that it may even mitigate gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, and some hypertensive disorders. And similarly, mum's fitness level can often help ensure a healthy birth weight for baby. So making sure that baby's birth weight isn't too high or too low. Um, and strong blood flow also carries oxygen and nutrients to your body's tissues, especially the brain and reproductive organs. So walking, especially in nature, can really re help to reset our stress hormones and help support balancing reproductive hormones. In addition to walking, yoga is an excellent opportunity to move your body, connect to our breath, exist in the present moment and feel rejuvenated and refreshed. More strenuous forms of movement, movement can also support our body's natural detoxification process because sweating is, helps us to eliminate a lot of the toxins through our skin, as well as having many other health benefits. So if you haven't already, we actually have a great blog post that's called The Pocket Guide to Prenatal Exercise, which goes through lots of safe ways to incorporate movement and also some tips on how to discuss it with your healthcare provider. So minimizing stress. So stress can directly shunt away resources from our reproductive health and stress hormones like cortisol, epinephrine and norepinephrine do interact with the HPA axis and modifies levels of hormones such as LH and FSH, which directly influence the production of estrogen and progesterone. So stresses can be triggered by external factors like work deadlines, your relationships, the stress even of trying to conceive, but it can also be chronic toxic exposure, sleep deprivation, and the result of over-exercising, which is something to be mindful of as well. And by incorporating some stress management tools, um, your body will be better able to priori prioritize reproductive health. So if that's something that you've been struggling with, it's definitely a really good area to focus on, um, particularly if you're having some issues trying to conceive. So I hope you got some helpful tips from today's presentation. Um, if you do have any questions, I'd love to chat with you. So you can obviously reach out um, at Full World Fertility through our Instagram, because I'll likely see your message there. But you can also reach out to my personal Instagram page, which is Health For Her Nutrition. And I've also listed my Full World email and website as well, in case you'd like any more information. Um, but yeah, I hope you found it helpful and that you've got some tips and you've got a bit of an idea of where you're going to start in terms of what you're going to choose in terms of reducing your toxin exposure. And if there's anything else that you wanted to look at in terms of um, additional reading, I've actually linked um, a lot of the studies and the references that we spoke about in today's presentations on the additional reading slides of this presentation. So you'll be able to um, dive into those a little bit deeper. So thank you so much again for watching today and welcoming me into your home and hope you have a lovely rest of the day.